BRCA1 and BRCA2 are genes that everyone is born with. However, if you're born with one bad copy of one of those genes, you have a very increased risk of developing certain types of cancer. The two most common cancers that we think of related to BRCA1 and BRCA2 are breast and ovarian cancer. And women with these gene mutations have a lifetime risk of breast cancer, which is as high as 80%, and a lifetime risk of ovarian cancer as high as 40%. It is a simple blood test, or even nowadays, you can even spit in a cup um, to have your DNA uh, sent for genetic testing. One of the important parts about genetic testing, though, is to have genetic counseling. That is, to understand why these genes are being tested and what the implications are for the genetic testing. The people who are the best candidate for genetic testing are individuals with a strong family history of breast and ovarian cancer, uh, individuals who are of Ashkenazi Jewish descent with breast and ovarian cancer, uh, those with male breast cancer. Uh, these are uh, groups that are very good candidates for genetic testing. If you, uh, for ex example, have a, a family history of, of breast cancer or a personal history of breast cancer, you might not be thinking that you're at risk for ovarian cancer, but that risk is as high as 45%. And ovarian cancer, unlike breast cancer, has no effective screening. It unfortunately usually presents late and when it does present late, unfortunately, most people uh, die of that cancer um, in, in late stages. So it's a cancer we very much want to pre uh, prevent. So the, one of the key reasons to do genetic testing is to figure out whether you're at risk for ovarian cancer and, and, and act on that information. We know, for instance, that we can prevent breast and ovarian cancer in women with these gene mutations. But right now, our options are somewhat limited and to prevent cancer, the best way to do that is to remove the ovaries or to remove the breasts. And what we want is a better choice for women. And my real hope is, is that um, we can uh, talk to individuals with BRCA1 and 2 mutations uh, within the next decade or two and tell them that they don't need to have surgery, but we can still prevent them from developing cancer. And uh, I do think that we can do it. It's just going to take a lot of, of work to get from here to there.